Okay, it's recorded. I make sure my microphone is on. One time I didn't um, turn on my microphone, so and that's gonna be our one of my concern. And let me present this. And again, good evening to each and everyone. And for all those people who listen to our audio, and um, I know there's there's a lot of people who listen to this also. And um, I I saw some sharing about my. Uh, our class over here and I, I really appreciate those people you can share this to some of your brothers and sisters friends I encourage some of my friends also to you know I told them man just click the YouTube channel you know if you want more information about the Lord uh, any issues about life any question about life itself and just ask me you know just ask me and let the Bible answer your question okay not tonight before we begin, it is essential for every born again believer that you need to be clean before the Lord. You know, um, by cleaning before the Lord is confessing your sin using First John one nine. If you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you for all unrighteousness. With your heads bowed and let's pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Father. For the whole year that we keep on digging in and digging in and pushing and pushing uh, to learn about your word. Uh, thank you so much, Father, for my family. It's so amazing that you established first to have a family, Father. That's why Christianity is, is about relationship. It's, it's never going to be a religion. It's about a relationship between us and, and the Lord. And you, Father, and thank you so much for my physical family that here. Um, we're all going to be in heaven, Father, because we received the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you so much for tonight. This is going to be the last uh, Wednesday that we're going to tackle mm -hmm. your word in this year. Bless us, O oh Lord. Bless your word. Thank you so much for all your provision that you provide for the whole year that we had been true, Father. We, we've been true to the to this roller coaster in life, but in the midst of that roller coaster, we are happy. We have joy. Uh, we have the inner happiness because of your word. Thank you, Father, for your grace is always sufficient, and thank you for um, your word that it, it it's always the lamp into our feet and it's the light into our path. Thank you so much, Father, for the Holy Spirit who gives us the spiritual IQ. Um, so that we can comprehend and apprehend the word of God and we can apply this in our situations in life. And we'll be transformed, Father, into the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. And tonight, as we continue on, we're going to visit once again in the moment when the Lord Jesus Christ is born. We give you back the glory and honor in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. And tonight... We're going to go back to our Christmas lesson, and, and that's going to be our continuation about last week's lesson. And I would like to, to, to go back on that again and again. Uh, tonight, we're going to tackle on about uh, the people who miss Christmas, you know, people who really miss Christmas. And I know there's a lot of people that really miss Christmas. And one of the questions that most often I encounter is... How do you celebrate Christmas? You know, one of the lessons that I, I, one of the questions that most often that I encounter most of the time, a lot of my friends, a lot of uh, people, they always ask me, how you guys celebrate Christmas? Is this just a regular party or is this just a regular holiday or is just like a regular gathering? One thing that I told them is we celebrate Christmas like the way the wise men celebrated is to worship the Lord, is to worship the Lord. That's how you celebrate Christmas. And um, most of the people, they really miss uh, Jesus Christ on Christmas. They celebrate him, but they miss him. You know, they celebrate his birthday, but that celebration is the birthday celebrant is missing. Now tonight, over here, we are facing the time when Christmas Christ is missing. And I scroll down uh, my Facebook. 
I saw some of my brothers and sisters, a lot of my friends, they are already celebrating the Christmas. First week of the December, they are already cel celebrating their Christmas. You know, I saw some of the people like in the company, a lot of uh, works, workers, they already celebrate their Christmas early, early December. Some of the people, they already celebrating their Christmas early December, last week. They are already celebrating their Christmas. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Walmart and when you go to the mall and people is packed because they are rushing for their Christmas present. But here, he said, in the midst of the fun fair, food, fellowship, family, and fun, it's easy to miss Christ at Christmas, but that's not unique to us because it, it happened also in the first century. We thought that this time we really miss Christmas. People are just celebrating Christmas without Christ. Like I say, well, how we celebrate Christmas? The same thing in the first century, century is not only that it happens to us in our time. It happened also in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some folks who face whom they really miss Christmas also during in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the way we miss him today, because each of us misses Christmas, are very relevant into our time. Why is it relevant? Because we can we can see their their pattern of those people who miss Christmas. See, in the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have those people who miss Christmas, and there are also those people who never miss the Christmas day. Now we're gonna talk about first the first person who missed Christmas was the innkeeper. He was the innkeeper. Now, in the book of Luke, turn your Bible in the book of Luke, chapter 2. Now, this is one, one of the passages all the time that when we face Christmas, we um, always get this Luke, chapter 2. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, where you can see your, um, your study Bible or you get your Bible. The title is The Birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus' Birth in Bethlehem. So we have the location. It's in Bethlehem. Now, in those days... He said, the decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the census be taken of all inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census. It's of their own city. Now, Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. Now, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child, while they were there, the days were complete for her to give birth. And she gave birth for her, for, for her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. There, there was no room for them in the inn, or we call this the, the motel or the hotel in, during that time. Now, the first person who missed Jesus Christ, it was the, the innkeeper, the person who taking care of the lodge or the, the hotel. Now, if, the, if the, the, the innkeeper only knew that this baby, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be born. He could have offered a room for the Lord Jesus Christ during this time. If the innkeeper only knew that this baby boy, that Mary, the one she carried on her womb, is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah that they've been waiting for for 700 years, that it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He could have just opened the room and it's going to be a special room for the Lord Jesus Christ. But he, does, he doesn't know about this baby. He didn't know about this baby. He could have opened it for the Lord Jesus Christ. See, if the innkeeper only knew that this baby born in his hotel was the son of a living God, they would have found a room for him. Because this is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And especially for the people 
that celebrating the Christmas day when they open up their, their lives to the Lord. That's why, you know, witnessing is so important. And every born again believer being an ambassador for Christ to declare the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Lord, it, it is so vital when it comes to our in the Christian way of life. That's our warrant or that's our that what one of our title, not only that we are a royal priest, we are also a royal ambassador. Not only because that we are saved, we can also tell the whole world about the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we are we are given a name that we are the fishers of fishers of men. Fishers of men. Now, that's why we, when we declare the, the Lord Jesus Christ to the lost world out there and let the world know about who is Jesus Christ. Maybe the innkeeper, he missed that. He was really, he's probably so busy about during this time because you know why? This time, it is, the, it is the census that they have to come back to their country, to their region, to their city for the registration for their tax, for their taxes. Can you imagine? We, we just have our <clears throat> rodeo the other day. It was so busy. Our, the strip, Las Vegas, it was so busy. I think it, it rodeo is more busier than the F1 the other day. In the airport, was we were so packed about this rodeo. Can you imagine? All the citizens, they have to go back to their own city to register for their taxes. With, that's the decree of their governor. <clears throat> and I couldn't imagine that when those people come back to their city, they are so excited to see their family. Some of them, they probably have the reunion. And can you, can you imagine the, the innkeeper? He is very busy to open up their, some of the room so that he can make some more money for those people. But he missed the big, the big, the big point in his life, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, we are told that Bethlehem, it was so crowded during that time. It was very crowded. I couldn't imagine. That's very traffic. In verse 1, he says, now those days the decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the census be taken for all inhabited earth. Now everybody were sent back to their own city to, to, have, to have their birth registration. So Joseph... From Bethlehem went back with his family because Joseph, he was from Bethlehem. He was from Judea, right over there in that city. You need to go back to have your registration. He went back to over there to his family to be registered. And this crowded town called Bethlehem. It was very packed during that time. And now here, the innkeeper don't have no room. And the question is, do you have any room for the Lord? And that's for the unbeliever. That's for the unbeliever. Do you have any room for the Lord? And is there any space in your life to give you, to give that for the Lord Jesus Christ? And for all those people who's listening also, if you have no Jesus Christ in your life, you're, you're going to miss Christmas. Because Christmas is about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said, I, I, I scroll my Facebook. I have so many friends that they celebrated Christmas Day, a Christmas party without the Lord. Christmas is not, it's not about Santa Claus. It's not about the reindeer. And it's not about the funfair, the giving gifts. Christmas is about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and his cross. You have to connect the cross on the Christmas day because the reason why Jesus Christ came down is because for that cross. And the innkeeper, he missed the Lord. Now what happened if you miss the Lord, you will stay lost in your life. And for all those people, and um, if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, this is the time that you will accept him as your Lord and Savior. And we accepted the Lord as our Lord and Savior. That's why you have the right to celebrate Christmas Day. People who has no Christmas, there's so many people around the world. They have so many religion. That's why I asked some of my friend. She was from Thailand. How do you guys 
uh, do you guys celebrate Christmas over there in Thailand? She said, no, we never celebrate Christmas, but we just call this a holiday. Some people, they just call it a holiday because they never believe the Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many religions all over the world. We thought that, I, that's what I thought before. But when I know that, that there are so many religions that they never believe the Lord Jesus Christ, they never celebrate Christmas. They're just watching us, that we are celebrating the Christmas day. That's why, you know, a lot of Chinese, this is the time for them to make money. And a lot of people, you know, the commercial today, they, they, it's time to make money. And it's the same thing to the innkeeper, he lost that sight about the Lord Jesus Christ because here they were into money, government, politics, business was good and economics were working. They are working for that. With a good business, crowded place and packed hotel, Jesus was missing and over here and he lost sight with the Christmas day. And it's very sad. It's very sad. Can you imagine? That's why I, I give all. I always give an emphasis for the people who who never who rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. That one day, you will face the Lord in in the judgment day, and you will the etern the eternity in eternity where you will spend your eternity, where you want to spend your eternity, in the lake of fire or in heaven with the Lord. That's why the innkeeper, you know where he is really going to go. He's going to go to the lake of fire. Now, there are more animals during that time than people who attended the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. People are so busy. That's why the angel could have just go over there in the, in the town and just open up the door for them because they are so busy. And he went to the shepherd. He went to the shepherd during that time. Now, after all, how can you have a birthday party for someone, for the person that you don't even know? And those people who miss the Christmas, they just call this Xmas Day, minus Christ. Xmas. There's no Christ, but we're just having fun and have our celebration. We miss the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the second person who missed the Lord Jesus Christ, it was King Herod. The second person who missed the Lord Jesus Christ on the Christmas day, it was King Herod. Now, in Matthew 2, chapter 2, verse 3, is it here, when Herod, the king, heard this, when the wise men came to King Herod, he was very troubled. And I want you to, to, to see that word. He was very troubled, King Herod. And all Jerusalem was with him. When King Herod heard this in the book of Matthew, he was very troubled. The reason why, when Herod heard the wise men, that they were looking for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When they came to King Herod, they said, where is the king? We're, we're going to come. We're coming here for to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled. He was troubled. He was irritated. He was agitated. He was frustrated. The reason why King Herod, he, he really didn't like to hear and there's, there's going to be another king. It's because you know why? He doesn't want anybody to overthrow his throne. King Herod doesn't like to hear, there, is there going to be another king? I thought I am the king in my life. He was very troubled when he heard the wise man looking for another king. Now, King Herod, he missed Christmas because you know why? He said here, he asked the question, what do you mean there's another king? I am in church. Over here, I am the king. Now, one of the way you miss Jesus is you want to be your own king. One of the people who miss the Lord Jesus Christ is because they want to be their own king. They want to be their own boss. They are the boss. I am the boss, Lord. What do you mean you're going to come over here in my life? 
Remember, we talked about Joseph last week. Joseph, he was so bothered when he saw Mary. He was she was pregnant, and remember the the in Matthew he said he wants Joseph wants to divorce Mary quietly. When Joseph found Mary, she was pregnant, and she discovered she was discovered that she was pregnant. Joseph, it battles him the most. He was so bothered. He was very disappointed about Mary. Remember that? When Joseph found out Mary, that she was pregnant after she went with Elizabeth, she came back, she was pregnant. And the Lord said, don't be afraid, Joseph. Take Mary as your wife. And sometimes this is part of our old man that we want to, we don't, we, we don't want to take out our old man, our old belief. Remember that I told you last week, Joseph, he has his imagination that this is what I want, Lord, in my life. I, I am the king, Lord. This is me. And our soul, remember, our soul works two ways. We have our verbalization and we also have our imag imagination. You know, we're imagining things that our life should be this way someday. Our life should have our, we, we're going to have money, nice family, nice house, nice car, nice job. The same thing as Joseph. He has everything programmed in his life. But suddenly, when the Lord Jesus Christ came, Joseph, that's not what I want from you. I will take your honeymoon first, Joseph. Can you give that to me? The same thing what happened to King Herod when he heard about the wise man looking for another king. I thought I am the king. He doesn't want to move out. You know, if somebody's here already, give them the seat. If, if the president come in our country and go to your house, give them the seat. Remember Zacchaeus, when Jesus Christ came to his house, he gave him his house. He is the most important person in the universe. Now, our old man doesn't want to do that one. The same thing as Joseph and King Herod, he was so bothered about it. I am the king. I am the boss. There is no other boss aside from me. Now, remember that Joseph, he never imagined that his life wouldn't be that way. Also, as Mary, when she got found pregnant before their wedding day, it was very amazing. The Lord Jesus Christ came. One of the way we miss the Lord Jesus Christ is you want to be your own king. Are you the boss in your life? Don't ever be. Be humble. Remember when John... John was on Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Mary, they were pregnant almost just at the same time. Because John, he is also a miracle baby. The reason why he is also a miracle baby, because when, the, when Gabriel appeared to Zechariah, what did Zechariah say? We, he, Elizabeth, she is advanced in years. That means she was past menopause already. How could it be? Zechariah asked the angel, how could it be? We're old already. And the angel says, Zechariah, you did. Zechariah didn't believe the angel. What did the angel tell Zechariah? You need to shut your mouth until this thing is over. Can you imagine? Until the baby boy is born, you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet, Zechariah. Because he didn't believe. But when the angel told Mary, Mary also has the same question of, of Zechariah. Mary asked the, the angel, how could it be? I, I didn't have any intimate relationship. It means sex with a man. How could it be? What the angel says, Mary, girl, you need to buy onto this because you know why? There is no impossible with God. There is no impossible with God. Buy this thing. And Mary, she embraced and she submitted what the, the angel said to Mary. But Zechariah, he was negative about it. And the angel told him, you need to be quiet until 
until this baby is born. And that baby is John. And when John, he is, he is the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when, when the president has a convoy, the president is not going to be the first one first. You know, when you look at the, the president, when they visit another country, they're not going to be in the first, in the first, in the first convoy, just in case for the ambush. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the commander in chief. So the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is John the, Bap, John the Baptist. And when John was baptizing in the, in the Jordan River, remember, when the Lord Jesus Christ approached him, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who can take away the sins of the world. He recognized the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did, what did John say? I must decrease and he must increase. It means you need to be humble. Humility. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ told the disciple, if you want to follow me, you need to, to deny yourself. You pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. Deny yourself. It's not you. You're not the boss. Same thing as King Herod. And follow me. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. You know. Good. There's a lot of people, they were, they were ahead. They're going to be last. If you, are, if you are first, you're going to be last. That's the paradox of this. When, G, when John the Baptist he says, he must increase, I must decrease. He recognized this is the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who can take away the sins of the world. And he bowed down with the Lord Jesus Christ. He recognized him. See, when the Lord Jesus Christ come into your heart, come into our soul, come into our lives, you need to give him the place. <laughs> give him the, the place in your heart. See, one way that the King Herod, he missed the Lord Jesus Christ, is he, he doesn't want to, be, to have another king. One of the way you miss the Lord Jesus Christ, King Herod, is he wants to rule his own life. You doesn't like the Lord Jesus Christ to rule your life. Not just the unbeliever, also for the believer. Would you like the Lord Jesus Christ to rule your life? Of course, we want the Lord to rule your life. Lord, remember, you just give the Lord 50%. Lord, you can rule my 50% and I rule my, my 50%. What did, what did Proverbs says? Love God with all your heart all your mind in is it's not 10% lord i give you all everything from me i surrender it all to you lord now let the lord rule your life not just a portion of your life because we don't want that we, we, we don't want to, the Lord to rule this part in our lives. One of the ways you miss the Lord Jesus Christ is to be troubled by the fact, King Herod, that he wants to be the only king and that you have to submit to him. You know how many people, they have problems, they have issue on submission to the authority. A believer who, who have a who have a problem of submitting to the authority, then you're not going to have a good life in this life. Husband and wife. Wife, submit to the husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. There's a, a chain of command. We have a chain of command in the Lord. That's why if you, if you doesn't like to, to submit to the Lord, remember the book of James, what did he say? Submit yourself into the Lord, or he will prosper you in the due time. If you really want it to be uh, promoted by God, you need to submit to him. Amen. Submit to the Lord because he will prosper you during in the due time. In the proper time when the Lord says, okay, I will promote you. I will give you prosperity. Now that promotion, no one can stop that. Not even the angels, not even Satan, because you know why? Based on the integrity of God, you are so blessed because you meet the criteria of that promotion. That's very amazing. 
And a lot of people, even believers, they have problem of submitting to the Lord. And submission, that's why we have the short circuit of obeying the Lord. We don't want to obey because we don't want to submit to the Lord. Obedience is the key to the word of God. Remember that song before? Trust and obey, for there's no other way. Trust and obey. Obey obedience to the Lord. That's one of the basic fundamental for every born again believer to obey the Lord. Whatever he say, yes, Lord, obey, because he is the commander in chief. And some of us doesn't win, doesn't want to submit to him. We have issues on submission. The same thing as King Herod. I, I don't want to. I don't want this another king because you know why? I don't want to submit to this another king. He was so bothered. Herod did not want anybody competing for his throne. When Jesus came and set up his own kingdom to declare his supremacy, Colossians chapter one. What did the Lord Jesus Christ say? He is the preeminence. Colossians 1.18. He said, I am the first place. He is the first place of everything. Jesus Christ should be the first, first place in everything in our life. That's so important. King Herod doesn't want the Lord Jesus Christ to be the first place. I am the first, Lord I am the first in my life. And that's why if you don't humble yourselves, people doesn't humble yourselves. Jesus Christ, he has a way to humble you. A believer who doesn't want to humble yourselves, the Lord, he has his own program, way, system to humble the believer. That's his own program. Because you know why? We are face we always face the justice of god every day he is justice if the lord didn't meet his standard he will curse you or bless the believer and that's very important and that's very important you know to to humble ourselves and when when we give the lord his his due not in ourselves and that's why god he has his own way to humble every believer. That's why, you know, God's integrity is so important to understand. Because you know why? God will hurt you. He knows where it hurts the most in every believer. God will humble you. That's what I mean. He knows how to humble every believer. You know. He wants, he wants our arrogance to set aside. Remember the Exodus generation? What did God say? I brought you into the desert to humble you. The same thing in our lives. The reason why we have circumstances is to see who we are. To see our helplessness in our lives. No, we can't do it. We can't do it. Lord, I can't do this. I, don't, I know I don't have no money, but your, your grace is always sufficient. Lord, my health. Lord, my family. Lord, we have so many problems in this life, but I know you are the Prince of Peace. You can have, we can have this peace that you will provide. And that's very amazing to know. God has a way to humble you. Always remember that. Any system, you might think that you're tough. Don't ever think in your life that you're tough. Because God will get you. He will humble you. There's always a way to humble you. It could be your finances. It could be your health. It could be your family. It could be your job. If there's, this is the way to humble you, then so be it. So be it. And that's God wants you to, to have, to have this humility. Because humility is teachability. And now you're ready because you know why? You're humble enough to learn the word of God. That's why 
Colossians 1.18 is so important to know the principle that God he is in the first place. King Herod doesn't want the Lord Jesus Christ to be in his own throne. Now, people don't want Jesus to interfere their lives. Lord, I'm okay. I don't need you. How many people are that? You know, especially when people are wealthy, when people, they're rich, they don't need the Lord. I have money. Lord, I have money. I'm so wealthy. I'm a billionaire. I'm a millionaire. I have all the stocks and everything in this life. See, people don't want Jesus to interfere their lives, careers, their money, their power, personalities, and ambition, and their plan. They don't want to include the Lord in their lives, in their career, the money, power, personality. Lord, I got it. I don't need you. But God said, I want to get in. I want to get in into your lives. I want to be involved in your lives. People are so scared. Because you know why? Once the Lord get in into their lives, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to start fixing your life. This is not the way you are. I'm going to change you. I'm going to change your life. I'm going to change your career. Remember? That Joseph, he thought that this is, Lord, this is my imagination. That I want to marry. I want to marry. We're going to have a, the best wedding day, Lord. And I'm going to have uh, my, my honeymoon one day. But the Lord Jesus Christ Joseph, I'm going to get your honeymoon first. Is that okay? You know? People don't want Jesus to interfere their plan. How many people, you know, they really doesn't want Jesus Christ. They, they like him to be in, in their vicinity. You're just right there, Lord. But don't get here. You're just there. Okay, don't cross the line. They, they, they love the Lord. They know the Lord. But they don't want him to cross the line, Lord. You're just right there. Religious people, people who, they just know the Lord. They don't want him to enter into their lives because once the Lord enter your life, he's going to change your life. He's going to change your life. He's going to change your life. But you listen, the Lord wants to enter your lives, your career, your money, your power, your personality, your ambition. What's your ambition? Are you dreaming someday? In your dream, did you include the Lord Jesus Christ in your dream? Ah. Anything you do in life, include the Lord. Incline it to the word of God. Because God will guide you. God will guide you. God will guide you. Include the Lord in anything you do in your life. So that God will bless whatever you do in your lives. And this is people who miss him. Because they just like the Lord to be in the, in the periphery. And really doesn't want them to get in into their house. To their lives. Lord, you're just right there. We're okay. We can see you. Yes, Lord, we can see you. You're just right there outside. And don't get in. Don't get in. Because we don't want our lives to be ruined. Because we're having fun, you know, in sin. We have, we have what we call the pleasures of sin for a while. But we are sinners. But see, God wants to change that. He wants to make a solution for our sins. He said not only was Herod messed up with all this, he missed all this thing because he wants to kill the Lord. He was very mad. Remember when he told the, the, the wise man, all right, uh, if you see him, tell me. Because I'm going to come myself. But Herod, he really wanted to kill the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we can see it right over here. That we are having, during in our celebration, we have a, a sanitized, we call it a sanitized Christmas. Very neat, nice. We have a nice light and celebration. Cute, melodious. We play some music and everything. But remember, when the wise men left, when the wise men left in the book of Matthew, uh, let me read that one. In the book of Matthew, turn your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 1. What happened? Kids are being killed. 
on the Christmas day. In the book of Matthew chapter one, because King Herod, he was very upset. Matthew chapter one. And let me see right. Oh, and chapter two, go to chapter two. He said, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, the Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw, the, for, for we saw his stars in the east and have come to worship him. This is the real meaning of Christmas. When people keep on asking me, how you guys celebrate Christmas? We worship the Lord, period. We're not just to come over there for the food, for anything else, but we came to worship the Lord. When Herod the king heard this, what happened? When Herod said, what? There's another king? And he said, he was very troubled, and all the Jerusalem was with him, gathering together all the chief priests. So he said, call all the chief priests, all the, you know, the high, high ranking ship, the priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, call all of them. And he said, Here, he inquired them where the Messiah was born. And they said, in, To him in Bethlehem in Judea, for he is what has been written in the prophet, in prophet Isaiah. They quoted, see, they're very smart. They quoted prophet Isaiah in verse 6. And you, O Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by new means led among the leaders of Judah, for out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time and star appeared. See, King Herod told them, if you see him, let me know. And he said, and he sent, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search, and search carefully for the, the child, and when he, when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come to worship him. And me too. Look for him. Let me know. Call me. Give me a message, because I'm gonna worship the Lord Jesus Christ. But listen, after hearing the king, they went their way, and the star which they had seen in the east went went up, went on before before them until they came and stood over the place where the child was. Now, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the, chi the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell into the ground and worshiped him. Then opening the treasure, they presented to him the gift of gold, frankincense, and the mare. And he said here, and having been warned by angel of God, they, they are warned by, the, by God, don't go back to Herod. Don't go back to King Herod. I know he, he told you, Herod told them that if you found the, the king, let me know because I'm going to worship him. But God said, don't go back. Don't go back. He said, and having warned by, the, by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left their own country by another way. They went another way. And he said here, now, now when they had gone, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. And, and he goes on to say, uh, go to verse 16. Maybe Herod was waiting for the Magi. And this is what happened. Then when Herod saw that he had been tricked, he got tricked by the Magi. What happened? He became very enraged. During that moment, and sent and slew all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all their vicinity in their Clark County. Herod was very upset because of he was very mad. He ordered to kill all the children, three three years old and down. In his vicinity. He thought that he can catch the Lord Jesus Christ too. Amazing. And this is one of those. What we call the dramatic. The drama of redemption. Remember that Satan. 
wanted to stop the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ made his way and Satan trying to stop again the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Genesis chapter 6. But Jesus had his way and Satan trying to make his move to stop the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ made his way and the line, the messianic line never cut off. Satan trying to cut that line, the messianic line, until this moment of that night when Herod trying to kill him. That's your Christmas day. This is your Christmas moment. You know how many years that the God, God the Father, hook up your Christmas day for the Lord Jesus Christ for us to celebrate him. You know how many killings, how many killings had been true. For Jesus to be born. And that night too. There's so many killings. He slew all the male children in his vicinity. Can you imagine? The whole Las Vegas. The whole city. He ordered to kill every male children from one to third years old. For him to be killed. That's how mad his hero is. He was very enraged. Because he missed the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to have the to see that you know Christmas is just didn't Jesus Christ did not just born, okay. Like I'm here. It took him so many killings, thousands of years. Satan trying to battle this thing for Jesus to be born. That's why it worth celebrating. The birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said the reason, the reason why we have a lot of trouble today in the world, in our lives, in our home, because the king has been rejected. And that's very true. In, in our politics, in our government, in our in our uh in, in, in some of the churches, in our uh work, in our job, in school, the reason why we have big trouble in our country is because you know why? We remove the Lord. We remove the Lord Jesus Christ in his rightful place. The moment you remove the Lord Jesus Christ, you are in big trouble. It's just around the corner. The judgment of the Lord is just around the corner. That's why we need to put him back during this Christmas. So as a result, is chaos, confusion, weeping, and mourning, and pain, and division. Jesus can be on the vicinity, like I said, but he can't be on the throne. Jesus, he's fine. He's just right there, but you can't be here, Lord. This is me right over here. Do not overrule my life. I don't want you to rule my life. This is, you know, I did it my way. I did it my way, Lord. And today we have people who wants to claim a holiday, but not claim the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it's Xmas Day for some people, you know. They, they give more emphasis about holiday, but it's not Christ. Now, the third people, group of people who miss the Lord Jesus Christ, the, who miss Christmas, is the religious folks. The folks who went to the church, they have a, a seminary background. They are so well versed of the Bible. Remember when King Herod said, he heard the Magi that the king will be born, and he called the high priest. All the ship priests in the in the city call all of them. The religious folks who went to the to the seminary, who went to the Bible college, and they came over there to gather to King Herod. And when he heard about this, the king, he asked them, the scribes, the ships in Matthew two, the people. He inquired them that the Messiah is where is the Messiah will be born. The king asked them. And they're very well versed. They're very well versed, as you can see in the book of Matthew. What did the king, the ship priest, he didn't did it in a stutter. He said, Oh, they quoted right away Isaiah. It's gonna be in Bethlehem, my king. He's gonna born, he's gonna be born in, in Bethlehem. Where the Messiah is born, he called him Messiah. He knew enough Bible reference. They knew about the word of God. They have the Bible. But what happened? 
See, all these chief priests, all the religious folks, you know, they went to seminary, they went to Bible college, they have enough information about the word of God. But they never made a trip to go to Bethlehem. When King Herod asked the religious folks, he said, verse 5 of Matthew, they quoted Micah 5, 2. See, Bethlehem, Micah 5, 2, is a, it's 700 years when Micah 5, 2 was prophesied, the perfect exact location of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very amazing. I want you to remember that. Because that's very significant. The reason why Bethlehem is a very tiny village. And this Bethlehem, it's, it's insignificant. It's a nothing. It's nothing. It's just a countryside. You know, for example, we have, um, have you ever been in, that, in any place that, oh, it's nobody. That place is not even known. It's not even well known. But when they put something else over there, which is popular, when they put Tesla, when they put Google, oh, oh, I know that place. Because it has now a significant, you know. But Bethlehem is nothing. It's very insignificant place. It's not important. But when Micah 5.2 prophesied that the Savior will be born, in Bethlehem, that insignificant became a significant. The same thing in your life. Our life when we were unbeliever is insignificant. You're nobody. But the moment you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, your life now is significant. You are now important as the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, welcome you. Don't you ever think that your life is nothing. Don't you ever think that your life is nothing. Because the moment you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, you are now part of the family of God. This is the significant we have in Christ. The same thing as Bethlehem is nothing. It's not well known, you know. Why would we go in Bethlehem? It's not Sikat. But the moment Micah 5 2 prophesied, Bethlehem become a part of our Christmas day. Imagine we sing Bethlehem, the nothingness of that place become part of our lives today. Same thing in your life. Your life is nothing without the Lord Jesus Christ. But the moment you have the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you ever think that your life is nothing. You have significant in Christ. It took 700 years before the event happens. Not only the event is going on to happen and all those people who's going to be involved about this birth of Jesus Christ. That's why a lot of people ask me, why are you, why are you serious about the Bible? Because you know why? The Bible tells this, this prophecy and the Bible prophesied the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here comes the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I need to take the word of God very seriously. Because you know why? The inerrancy of the Lord, the word of God. It means that there is no error. Inspired by God. That's why I took the Bible very serious. We call this internal evidence. Many people didn't believe the Bible. Because it's just written with, with, with people. But this is, the, this is one of the evidence that the Bible is the word of God. Now, this place, Bethlehem, it has now a significant. Because the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, he was born in Bethlehem. Now, this religious leader, they knew the scripture. The religious folks, they're very smart. They knew the scripture. But guess what? They never made a trip to go to Bethlehem. See, Bethlehem is just miles away when they're, you know, they're just in Jerusalem. But Bethlehem is just, you know, maybe Las Vegas to Henderson. 
but they never made a trip to go to Bethlehem. It's not like you, you have to ride an airplane, you know, to book a ticket to ride a plane. You can just ride it, walk for it. See, the religious leaders, they knew the Bible. See, that's the problem, too. If you knew too much about the word of God and never changed your life, you have a problem. It's a good thing that you know less in the Bible and that it changed your life. The written word should, be, should lead you to the living word, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew a lot of the word of God, the religious leader, but they never made a trip to go to the living word. You have so many, you know, that's one thing. If you know so much the Bible, it, may, it, it will become you arrogance. See, the, the, the reason, the purpose of Bible study is for you to be transformed in the likeness of the Lord Jesus, the Son, Jesus Christ. That our character should be changed. Transformation. It's transformation process. That's the purpose. It's not to cram up our, our soul with all the word of God. The same thing as the religious folks. See, having less word of God and use it to change our lives. That's the beauty. It's not just to cram up our, our soul with all the word of God and we never change our lives. We're just the same since five years ago. The same thing as the religious leaders. They have the word of God. They're so, they, they went to college, Bible college. They are in seminary. But listen, when the Lord Jesus Christ was born, they never made a trip to see the Lord Jesus Christ. But they knew the verse, but they never go to Bethlehem. The folk who are in the Bible church didn't go to Bethlehem. There's just right there. If you know the Bible and don't go to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, you miss the, the Christmas day. You miss Christmas. Word doesn't lead, see, if the written word of God doesn't lead you to the living word and it become void. You just knew the, the word of God, but it never changed your life. You know, the, the most important thing to know the word of God, it has to be changed your life. I, I, it should be reflecting into your life. And the purpose of the written word is to lead you to the living word, Jesus Christ. He is the living word. Now, he said here, why would these religious people drawn to the Savior, to Bethlehem, to Jerusalem, it's not that far. But listen, there are some folks who went to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the reason why they didn't go, the problem is these people, the religious folks, they didn't, they didn't go to see the Lord Jesus Christ because they think they have. They, didn't, they never know that they have a problem. The reason why they didn't see the Lord Jesus Christ, because they think, see, people, unbelievers, they never, they never went to the Lord Jesus Christ because you know why? They never think, the, they never knew why Jesus Christ came. They never knew why do we have to see the Lord Jesus Christ. They never think that they have a problem. Remember, the reason why Jesus Christ came is to save the world, to save you from sin, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. In other words, they don't understand why Jesus came. The people why they didn't go to see the Lord Jesus Christ because they don't understand why, why he came anyway. Why, why did he, he was born? He came to deal the greatest problem in the human race. And we call this sin. And to provide us salvation. See, these religious folks, they never made a trip. But guess what? Who made a trip? The wise, the wise men made their journey to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine the wise men, they crossed continents just to see the Lord Jesus Christ. They followed the star in the east. 
they go through their journey because they knew they need the Lord Jesus Christ. They came to worship him. Where did the Magi knew about this information? Through Daniel in the time of Babylon. The Magi, they have three fraternities. You can see that in their offering, their gift. See, fraternities, they have the gift to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the mare, frankincense, and gold. There are three groups of fraternity. But these three wise men, it represents their fraternity because Daniel, back in Babylon, he told them about this information that the star in the east will guide you. They made the trip to this one of the folks who, did, who didn't miss Jesus Christ in Christmas. And some of those folks are the shepherds of the flock during that night. This wise man, they crossed continents to see the Lord Jesus Christ. But the, those people, the religious folks, they never made a trip to see the Lord Jesus Christ. They understood that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the reason for the season. I want you to have that. Now tonight, I would like to say, you may have a Merry Christmas. He is the reason why you celebrate Christmas. And I can't wait for Saturday. All right, with your heads bowed, and let's pray. And um, let's continue this with our prayer. Father, thank you so much, Father, for tonight. And thank you so much for we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ's birthday. And aside from that, we celebrate Joyce's birthday, Father. Thank you for her life. Thank you for her um, uh, presence always, Father, and to being with you. And thank you her, for her life, Father. And, and I want you to, uh, we pray to, for you, Father, to guide her and her plan, any plans that she's about to uh, go on, Father. Bless her, O oh Lord. Bless Joy. It's her birthday. And as we continue on, Father, with my family, bless us, O oh Lord, our loved ones back home in the Philippines. We pray for Joy's father, Pastor Dadula father. Uh, we know that there, there's nothing impossible with you. Everything goes into your plan. There's, a, there's nothing that happens in this life that is not connected to the spiritual issue, Father. It's always connected to the spiritual life. Father, thank you for my family. And I know there's so many people around the world that they even have a hard time celebrating this Christmas day. They couldn't even buy a gift. But we have the perfect gift, Father, that which is free from God is the Lord Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through, our, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much tonight, Father. Uh, bless us, O oh Lord, our loved ones back home in the Philippines, in Hawaii, here in Las Vegas. And um, we pray for our nation and especially for our job. Bless us, O oh Lord. And thank you for the protection every single day, Father. Thank you for our health that you provide, Father, and all the provision that you, you're taking care of us, and especially for your word. And the word is always amazing, Father, because your word is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you so much, Father, for tonight. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. And let me see. Give me... Thank you.